I am not someone who's particularly familiar with danger. Growing up, I was always the goody two-shoes, well-behaved and absolutely terrified of getting in trouble. Now, as I got older, that fear translated into a useful life skill. I developed the ability to look ahead, perceive future dangers, maybe even prevent mistakes before they happened. This has made me very good at my job, but maybe not the best crack to have at a party. But even as risk averse as I am, even I couldn't avoid the dangers and the pitfalls of falling in love. When this story begins, I am a student in college, uh, and as a hobby and extracurricular, I have taken up the sport of ultimate frisbee. Another key crucial piece of backstory is that I had just been savagely dumped and was feeling very pissed off about it. Now, I was feeling kind of stuck, like I needed a change. So I decided that to shake things up and to, you know, head my life in a different direction, I was going to do something drastic. So instead of getting ready for training, like I should have been, I went to the nearest hair salon and told them to make me a blonde. <laughs> now, I'd been a brunette my whole life, so when I arrived late into training, the change was pretty obvious. But the reaction of one teammate in particular stood out to me. Sean was in the middle of coaching a group of beginners when I walked in the door. And I noticed that as I passed him, mid-sentence, he did a full-on double take. And I caught him looking. And I thought, that's interesting. Now, we'd known each other for a couple of years at this point, mostly getting to know each other in group situations, training, tournaments, team nights out. But there had developed this weekly ritual that had kind of become just for us. Every Thursday evening after training, we would walk the length of O'Connell Street towards Stevens Green to get our bus home. And during this time, I got to know him. I learned that he was intelligent and funny. If you tried slagging him, he was quick as a whip with a comeback, which made me very jealous because I was terrible at that. I learned that we had similar interests in common, like books and movies. And above all else, I learned that he was kind. If ever I had a problem, I knew that I could rely on him to help me. So when I, I saw him looking at me like that, I suppose I sensed an opportunity. And maybe possessed by the same spirit that had taken me into that hair salon earlier in the day, something in my head just said, don't overthink it, just go for it, see what happens. So I sent him a text message and asked him if that Friday he would like to come over and watch a movie. <laughs> Which he did. We had a lovely evening and a lovely morning. <laughs> and I finished the weekend on an absolute high. Unfortunately, that high was not to last. A few days later, he sent me a text message. He said, I had a really lovely time the other night. Would you like to go out next week? And this little happy bubble that I've been living in of carpe diem, seize the day, and you know, don't worry about it, suddenly popped. And all of this was becoming far too real. All of my overthinking and my anxiety came crashing back into my brain. I panicked, and I told him no. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. It's probably the same thing that he was thinking. What is wrong with you? <laughs> now, if I may take a moment in my own defense, it made sense in my head at the time. I had not been particularly lucky with romantic relationships in the past. All of my previous experiences had been brief and had ended painfully. So I wasn't exactly in an optimistic place about romance. So all of these warning signs started going off in my brain. Danger, danger, don't do it. I launched into this spiral of worry, something that I was pretty familiar with. What if it goes wrong? What if he hurts me? Or worse, what if I hurt him? What if I fuck this up so badly that he hates me? And then all of our mutual friends would hate me, and I'd lose my teammates and my hobby, and my life would be over. 
Yes, that is what it is sometimes like inside my brain, and yes, it is exhausting. So I didn't tell him any of this, of course. I just made up some crap excuse and rejected him. But he didn't respond the way that I thought he would. I thought that he would do what I would have done. He would have saved face, played it cool. Oh yeah, no, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, didn't even care that much anyway. <laughs> but he didn't do that because unlike me, he wasn't a gigantic coward. Instead, he actually got quite cross with me because it was obvious to him how I felt, that I liked him. To be honest, it was obvious to anyone with eyes. And he liked me too. And I had treated him very carelessly. I had hurt him. And he took the time to explain that to me. And that was pretty uncomfortable. I had to really sit with that. I sat with it for a week or two and thought, God, okay, how am I gonna fix this? The next time we saw each other was on another team night out and we were sort of circling each other, knowing that we should probably talk but not really knowing how to start the conversation. Eventually we got into it, I apologized. He thankfully accepted my apology and asked what was gonna happen next. Clearly I was still terrified, so I said that I didn't know. And he just rolled his eyes at me and said, Eva, I'm not asking you to marry me. Maybe we could just go on a couple of dates and see what happens. And in the face of all that, my catastrophizing seemed pretty ridiculous. You know, I was already dividing up how we'd split our friends in the divorce. <laughs> and we hadn't even been on one date yet. It made all my worries seem pretty silly. So I could see his point, but obviously I was still pretty scared. So finally he just looked at me and he said, can you even just give me one good reason why not? Well, I couldn't. None of my worries, none of my projections about future danger and pain could measure up to that simple statement. I could not think of a single good reason why not. I don't remember much about the rest of the night. I know that we kissed and that we danced and that we had a really lovely time. As he suggested, we went on a few dates and in a few weeks, he asked me to be his girlfriend. That was on December 4th, 2012. So that means last Monday, December 4th, would be our 11 year anniversary. <laughs> and when I look back on all of it now, I find it so funny because He's still intelligent, he's still funny, still quick with a comeback. I, thanks to living with him for almost a decade, have gotten much better at it. <laughs> but looking back, the thing that I remember the most is that the qualities he showed me in those admittedly awkward couple of weeks were the ones that are the most important to me to this day. His forthrightness, his willingness to put forth an argument, his willingness to call me out on my bullshit, and I just shudder to think how I almost let one of the most amazing things in my life pass me by because I was too afraid of the potential danger in front of me. And so I think the thing that has helped me the most throughout all these years is when I'm wondering whether or not something is worth the risk, I can just look at myself in the mirror and say, well, can you think of even one good reason why not?